Hello, this is Julia, and thank you so much for joining me on a new crafty adventure. I have this beautiful Poisonetta stamp by Tim Holtz, and I didn't find the time to use it before Christmas. So now is that time, and I will use also use the Distress Glazes, which are a translucent tinted embossing powder, and I will test it out with one of my favorite techniques, ink smushing. I start out with a piece of watercolor paper by Tim Holtz that will withstand all the inks and water I plan to use. And then I stamp that in archival black ink, which is a waterproof ink and will not smudge when I use water and ink over it. I stamp two flowers and let the ink dry before moving on to the ink smushing. Now, the ink smushing will take some time because I want that speckled, distressed look and I have to dry my paper between smushing so the colors don't mix together too much. I use distress oxide inks in sponge sugar, candied apple and aged mahogany and simply smush the ink pads on my surface, spray with water and smush the paper in the ink a little at a time, drying in between, and I also use a small paintbrush to make splashes and create texture on my flowers. Now this looks like a mess before I'm finished and are happy with my flowers. In a way this is me playing and discovering how to get where I want. I smush and dry many times, and when I feel happy with what I have, I have these textured flowers I saw in my mind. For the second flower I use a blue color scheme and start off by splashing my colors on with a brush and aiming for those small speckles before I start smushing and drying this flower. I use this dress oxide inks in tumbled glass, speckled eggs, broken china and shipped sapphire. Playing around like this takes some time, but I find that when I let go of my perfection and aim for imperfection, the pressure of creating goes away and I am a much happier crafter. Soon I have my two perfectly imperfect flowers and I just love the texture and depth all that playing led up to. Now is the time to cut them out. If you are a subscriber of mine, you know I always want more shadows, more texture. And you know I will ink up those flowers using my darkest shade from before, H Mahogany followed by ground espresso for the deepest shadows and on the blue flower I will do the same and use the dark blue shipped sapphire before black soot. Now I really love love how these flowers turned out. But since I want to try out the Distress Glazes, I thought I would step these flowers up a notch. The Distress Glazes are translucent, tinted embossing powders, which means I can add the tint and shine from the glazes and still see the texture under the glaze. I dab the flowers with sticky embossing ink and cover them in the powder, speckled egg for the blue 
and antique linen for the rent and heats it until shiny. I love the flowers both with and without the glazes and this time I have a plan to tie in the glazes with my background later. Now let's make some inky backgrounds using the stress oxide inks in the same colors as I used on the flowers. Now I must warn you and ask you to trust me. This will look like a hot mess all the way until the end. A beautiful end. So I added filled violet to my blue color scheme and start adding it with a small brush in a circle. In the end this will be a galaxy scene, so bear with me as I add the blue broken china and start blending that all out over my background very random. There is no method to the madness, just color. And I add tumbled glass and speckled eggs in the same random way. I blend in the dark blue shipped sapphire to deepen the scene and finish off with a lot of black soot. I have a water mister with a few scoops of pearlescent powder, perfect pearls, mixed in. But first, I flick on regular water droplets all over my background and pick color up with a paper towel. Then I mist with pearlescent water and pick up more color before I use white distress paint and flick that on my background. Finally. I flick on speckles of black soot paint and let it dry. The next background I added a warm yellow scattered straw to the red shades from the flower and start putting that down with a small brush. Now remember, there is no method to the madness, just trust me for a little longer. I add the lightest from the red flower, spun sugar, and then I bring in a lot of that yummy red candied apple, as random as I can. Then I bring in that dark reddish brown aged mahogany from the side. After the red, I bring in the same brown ground espresso and go back and forth between the colors before I finish it off with black soot. Then I do the same as before. I flick regular water droplets first and pick up color when the inks react with the water. Then I spray the pearlescent water and pick up color with a paper towel, leaving a pearlescent shimmer behind. Now here is where I tie in those distressed glazes to add texture and depth. I use a pen with sticky embossing ink and fill in circles, not perfect at all, randomly and cover them in the same embossing glaze, antique linen. And I get these shiny, slightly darker circles when I heat set with my heat tool. I always heat set from the back first, so the tool is very hot when I melt the glaze. I do the same on the blue background, fill in circles with my embossing pen, covered this time in speckled egg distress glaze, and heat set to get those wonderful dark glossy circles. I chose a simple sentiment, somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known and I printed it out on printer paper and inked up the edges 
to avoid that stark white on the sentiment strips, and to avoid smudging, I rub some Distress Microglaze that seals water-based mediums on my sentiment, and buff off the excess with a paper towel. I glue down my sentiment and adhere the flower with foam tape to really pop it up. I use the same sentiment and do the same process for this blue background before I glue down my sentiment and pop up the flower with more foam tape. As a last detail on both cards, I use my white gel pen and draw some imperfect sketchy lines around the sentiment. And then my cards are all finished. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you will stick around for more. Until the next time, see you soon.